There are countless ways to cook turkey, and on today's show, I'll teach you four very different methods. First, all you need to know about stuffing and roasting a turkey that tastes as delicious as it looks, I like to call this turkey 101. Then, a new take on roasting a turkey that is guaranteed to yield what might be the moistest turkey you've ever tasted. And for those of you who love dark meat, a nearly foolproof method for slow braised turkey legs that are a meal unto themselves. Finally, a roasted and rolled turkey breast is a great way to have a small scale turkey dinner any time of the year. Now this is my classic method for roasting a turkey. The key to its success is soaking cheesecloth in butter and wine and draping it over the turkey's breast while the turkey roasts. It results in an exceptionally moist and flavorful and beautifully bronzed bird. So let's start with the stuffing. Four onions peeled, medium chopped, sauteed in one and a half sticks of butter. Have 16 ribs of celery chopped medium that can cook along with the onions. So these are starting to cook. Two loaves of country bread cut up into one inch cubes. And this can be day old. It's a little bit dry. And you can moisten the bread with about six and a half cups of stock. This can be turkey stock, vegetable stock, and I'm just moistening the bread, getting it, getting it to plump up a little bit. Dried bread really plumps up very nicely. Now there's quite a bit of salt and pepper, two teaspoons of coarse salt and four teaspoons or to taste. You might find that that's a little too much. Mm, smells really good. 10 sage leaves, finely chopped, two cups of pecans finely chopped, and two cups of dried cherries. These are really good in the stuffing. But you could substitute prunes, cranberries, dried cranberries. Uh, you could substitute apricots. And to get these even a little softer, add a half a cup of turkey, chicken, or vegetable stock to your vegetables. Mm, does that smell good? And oh, three cups of chopped parsley. Makes a fragrant, herb-infused, tasty stuffing. And now, add your beautifully sauteed vegetables. Mmm. What a nice addition. Now this stuffing should cool completely before you put it inside the turkey. And now to roast, three sticks of butter. This is for the basting liquid and for the cheesecloth covering. And one whole bottle of a white wine, like a Sauvignon Blanc or Chardonnay, works very well. Now, immerse a piece of cheesecloth into that mixture. You're making a nice buttery, whiny cover for your bird. Use cotton cheesecloth, turn that off, and now to stuff. Stuff the neck cavity as well as the body cavity. For a large party, you're gonna need a big bird, 15 to 20 pounds. Figure one and a half pounds per person. Don't push it in too tightly because it really does expand when it cooks. This is a colorful and tasty and fragrant stuffing. Very, very nice stuffing. So pull that skin and affix with toothpicks. It's sort of like being in the operating room. And now your wing tips can be bent under. They're a little slippery and they fight you. Rinse your hands. You can truss now. Use cotton string. So I go here, over the wings, over the drumsticks, and around. It's so nice because a bird cooks more evenly and the legs won't dry out. They're kept close to the body like this. And I always end by tying in a bow, then I can release it nicely. So there, transfer to your baking pan. Has to have a rack in it, very important. And this will also hold the bird in shape. 
fill in the rest of the cavity with stuffing. And all this beautiful excess stuffing, bake it in a baking dish. If you've used vegetable stock, it is perfect for the vegetarians in your family. So now, brush the bird all over with a little bit of room temperature butter. And the legs and the wings. And now season with sprinkling of salt and pepper all over the skin. Now, the draping actually squeeze out a lot of the moisture from the cheesecloth. And I put it in there in quarters, and I think it will still be in quarters. And now just drape this carefully over your entire bird. This goes into the 450 degree oven for 30 minutes. So now to baste, after you've reduced the oven temperature to 350 degrees, you can do this with a bowl baster, or you can use a big ladle. Make sure you get the cheesecloth really, really wet. You can also take a lot of the juices from in the pan and baste with those. Two hours, 30 minutes. Every half hour, baste that cheesecloth. So now comes the time to take the cheesecloth off the bird and then brown it so it gets that beautiful mahogany glaze. Ah, lovely. You can just discard this. I have a bowl right here. And this goes right back into your 350 degree oven. And you continue to baste every 15 minutes or so until the skin is just the color you want it. And the interior temperature is 165 degrees. And you'll be very surprised at the color of the skin when it's finally done. This is a beautiful show-stopping centerpiece. I am garnishing with sage, all different kinds of sage, really pretty. Add some lady apples if you like, or because there's some pecans in the stuffing, I might sprinkle some shelled pecans in amidst the sage leaves, how pretty they look. So that's all done. Make sure you have somebody waiting with a very sharp knife to carve this beautiful bird. There are those naysayers who claim they don't like turkey because it's always dry. Well, that's definitely not the case if you roast your bird wrapped in parchment paper. To create a cozy steam packet is very, very easy. Once nearly cooked, you rip open and crank up the heat to brown the skin until it's crackling and crisp. Start with a 14-pound turkey. This is a good size for the average family. And I've decided to stuff this particular turkey with a sausage pear stuffing. About six cups fit in the cavity. And don't pack it in too tightly because it will expand while it's cooking. And you can turn your turkey over and secure the neck skin with a couple large toothpicks or skewers. This helps keep the skin in place and the stuffing in the cavity. There. And now a lot of these turkeys have the wings clipped so that you can tuck them under the breast. Now push them under like that and then you can truss. Take a piece of twine and I go underneath here up over the drumsticks like this and just tie the legs together. You want to keep everything kind of compact so that everything roasts evenly and nicely. So there, that's very good. Take some softened butter. I'm using six tablespoons for the breast and really brush the skin generously with the butter. Do the whole breast and the wings and slather it on. Place your bird on the middle of a 40-inch piece of parchment paper that's 16 inches wide. And you're not finished with the butter. Two more tablespoons, so basically you're using one whole stick of butter. And just do this middle part so that the underside does not stick to the parchment. There. Lift carefully and hope it doesn't slither out of your hands. And plunk it down right here. And now fold the first piece. There are three pieces of parchment paper. Roll it down. We want to encase the turkey 
in the parchment. So this one now will be folded and rolled. This one is 48 inches long. It goes from front to back. Okay, so now your last piece, which is again 40 inches, and I will just turn it to make it easier. Have your oven preheated to 325 degrees, and the turkey's going to go in for two hours and 45 minutes. So get this into the rack and now into the 325 degree oven, two hours, 45 minutes. So now this has been in the oven, time to open it up. Now that is not a beautiful turkey, but it can be beautiful if you put it now into the oven uncovered for another 45 minutes to get brown. And before you put it back into the oven, add about a half a cup of water to the pan. 425 degrees for 45 minutes. No basting, nothing. The thermometer should read, when inserted into the thickest part of the flesh, 165 degrees for turkey. Perfectly roasted, moist, parchment-wrapped turkey. It's a very good turkey recipe, and you should try it. For those of you who love dark meat and don't want to cook a whole turkey, have you ever thought of just cooking the legs? My favorite method is to braise them in a rich herb-infused stock. Not only do they come out incredibly flavorful, they also fall off the bone tender. The biggest difference between braising and stewing is that the meat is cut into smaller pieces for stews and entirely submerged in cooking liquid. Braised meats are cooked in larger pieces and only partially submerged turns out very flavorful this way. So notice I'm salt and peppering these turkey legs. These come from a 16 pound turkey. Skin side down in a little bit of hot olive oil in your braising pan. This is an enameled cast iron pot, which is so great for braising. We're gonna just put this in here so that the skin gets beautifully brown before we start adding any other ingredients. So to get turkey legs that look that brown takes about five minutes per side. They do look good, don't they? Now, to proceed, we want to take out all but one tablespoon of the fat in this pan. And you can do that by pouring it out or by spooning it out. I'm going to just Spoon out all the excess. Now add a half a cup of dry white wine and deglaze the bottom of the pan. Deglazing scrapes up all those brown bits and tasty little morsels in the bottom of the pan. Perfect. Now add two leeks cut crosswise into quarter inch pieces. Leeks are so flavorful and when cooked, impart a very luscious flavor to your meat. So cook these until they just start to get a little translucent. The best cuts of meat, by the way, for braising and stewing come from harder working muscle groups like legs, shoulders, breasts, uh, neck areas of the animal. And these have more collagen, which helps keep the meat nice and tender. Okay, so now we can add our celery, two ribs cut into quarter inch dice and two carrots, again, cut into dice. So this is like a mirepoix, the Italian sofrito, a flavorful addition to any braised meats. And you can now add chicken stock. This is three cups of chicken stock. And if you have turkey stock, because these are turkey legs, you could use a turkey stock. You can add bay leaves, at least three or four, uh, three or four sprigs of fresh thyme, and some nice plump sage leaves. All of this really does enhance, again, the flavor of what we are braising, turkey legs. Bring that to a boil and reinsert your turkey legs. Start off by braising these skin side down. Have your oven preheated to 300 degrees. After 40 minutes, we're going to 
turn them over and cook them for another 40 or 45 minutes. And so this is it. The hard work is done. So here are our gargantuan turkey legs. They really do look great. Now, if you're going to splurge and have one per person, serve right onto the plate. Can you eat that? And what I like to do is serve with some delicious, rich, golden Yukon potato puree, mashed potatoes, like that. Some of the lovely gravy, which is the braising liquid. And a little sprinkling of parsley. If you want a little thyme, that's nice too. But I like to serve with a little fluffy bunch of microgreens, kind of an odd addition to a giant turkey leg. Anyway, that looks really great. And no need to make a gravy since there's a sauce built right in. Enjoy. And now I have in front of me a turkey breast. You can create a really delicious turkey dinner in no time at all by roasting a rolled turkey breast that's flavored with a delicious compound butter flavored with orange zest, sage, and parsley. This is a fresh turkey breast. It is a lovely piece of meat. I wanna turn this over because I wanna butterfly it. Breast has a lot of gorgeous meat and I'm going to flatten out the thick parts by just slicing like that and like this. Don't cut through the skin, don't cut through the uh, flesh. Now turn it over again and loosen the skin with your fingertips. By loosening under the skin, you create a cavity in which you can put your flavored butter. Be prepared while you're working with raw poultry like this or any raw meat, just keep rinsing your hands after you deal with this. So there, okay, so that's loose. And now for the compound butter, six tablespoons of softened butter, unsalted with a zester like this. Just take off the skin of a nice, big, bright skinned orange. It's very flavorful. Zest adds such a nice flavor to the turkey meat. And always zest before you cut the orange and juice it. It's very hard to zest a squeezed orange skin. There. You're gonna need the juice of the orange too, so uh, you can juice the orange at this point if you like. You can just squeeze the juice. You can use a reamer for this. You can just reserve this for later when you're making the gravy. And into the butter and orange zest, put some salt and pepper and some chopped parsley and chopped sage. This is so good. So here we have our compound butter. And take half of this and insert it under the turkey breast. You just put a quarter of it under this side, a quarter under this side. And then you can kind of flatten it out through the skin. So now turn this over, flatten it out as much as you can. I would put a little bit of salt on the meat, not too much, and a little bit of the pepper and the rest of the butter. Slather it all over the meat. And if the butter is at room temperature, it's so easy to spread it, so easy to deal with it. Now the rolling. Roll the short end up. And we try to get a roll that's of even thickness. And now to tie. Start on one end and then you can put this around your hand like this and pull tight. What you're trying to do is hold it in place, make it of a uniform circumference. 
It's the same stitch that an embroiderer uses when you finish off the edge of a blanket. That's why it's called the blanket stitch. So there, that looks extremely neat. And take this string underneath and tie right here to finish it off. And there, that looks great. So now this goes into an oven-proof pan. A skillet like this works very, very well. And have your oven preheated to 400 degrees. So big, thick slices, quarter inch thick slices of onion as the base for the pan. This adds flavor and uh, also some nice vegetables to eat. Carrots, you can just put these around. You're making kind of a vegetable lined grill pan for your lovely turkey breast. And uh, put the breast right on top. And now add one cup of chicken stock. If you have turkey stock in the freezer, use that. And season the skin with a sprinkling of salt and pepper right into your oven. Baste every 15 minutes until the interior reaches 150 degrees, about an hour and 30 minutes. So here is our roasted turkey breast. Take off all of the trussing string. So I'm gonna let it just sit here until I defat the gravy. All of these vegetables, remove them from the liquid in the pan. So now, put this into a gravy separator. This is a fat separator. There's a little strainer on the top of this particular one, which I like very much. And you just pour all this juice into here. And you can see the fat is rising to the top of the meat liquid. So into a warm skillet, you can add that orange juice. Remember, if there's any little bits, the orange juice will loosen them, but this is a pretty clean pan. And now your lovely juice from the turkey itself. Add that to your pan and see how the fat is staying in the separator. Oh, this is such a great thing. Just to stop, that's all the fat. Bring this to a boil, have a whisk candy, and then you will add your flour mixture one and a half teaspoons of instant flour, and one and a quarter cups of chicken stock. This is a very good method for a lumpless gravy. So while this cooks, it's gonna take about eight minutes to thicken, you can slice the meat. And I suggest cutting it for a dinner party. I think a quarter of an inch thick, like these slices would be pretty and very Tasty. And so here is our gravy. Just pour it into a serving bowl or gravy boat if you have one. And don't forget, if you're going to serve this at a dinner party, a nice icy cold Sauvignon Blanc would be very delightful. Enjoy. Imagine turkey this good in less than two hours. Thank you all very, very much for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Cooking School. Toast two slices of your favorite white sandwich bread. Spread both sides with mayonnaise. Layer one slice of bread with iceberg lettuce. Top with tomato and crisp bacon. Thinly slice leftover roast turkey breast and place on top. Sandwich together with a second slice of toast. Carefully cut using a serrated knife. Serve with your favorite pickles.